Hi everyone, this is a video tutorial to help you with predicting product for an E2 reaction. So whenever you're given one of these problems, the first thing you want to do is establish whether it is an E1 or an E2 mechanism. So if we take a look at our alkyl halide, we see that it is a tertiary alkyl halide. So this doesn't tell us very much because both E2 and E1 will react with a tertiary alkyl halide. So the next thing that we're going to look at then is the base that's used. So here we've got the methoxide ion, and methoxide is a very strong base. Strong bases are what we use in an E2 reaction. So once we've established that this is in fact an E2, we'll then look at our beta carbons. So this alpha carbon here has three adjacent carbons, so those three are all our betas. I've color-coded them for you, so the yellow, the blue, and the green beta. Each one would produce a different product if it lost a hydrogen. So the yellow one would produce this, the blue beta carbon, if it lost a hydrogen, would produce this product, and finally we would obtain the green product if this carbon here lost a hydrogen. The next thing we do when determining our major product is to take a look at what the leaving group is. So in this case, our leaving group is bromine. If the leaving group is bromine, iodine, or chlorine, the major product will be the most stable alkene. So in this case here, the green product is the most stable alkene, so based on regioselectivity, this would be the major product that we would get out. Okay, so now that we've used regioselectivity to determine the major constitutional isomer product, we then move on to stereoselectivity. So this is our major product based on what our previous work was. So when we take a look at this, we can see that this alkene can have two possible arrangements, either the Z arrangement or the E arrangement. Because this beta carbon had two hydrogens initially, we know that both the E and the Z isomer will form. However, the E will be the major product because it keeps the bulkiest groups opposite one another, making it more stable than the Z configuration where there'd be a lot of steric bumping happening. So whenever you're predicting product for these reactions, first take a look at the regioselectivity. If you have potential to form an E or a Z isomer, you then need to look at the stereoselectivity. If you have a beta carbon that has two hydrogens, both E and Z will form, but E is what will dominate.